morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about what's going on in and around the city of Missoula and more as we dive into the weekend. Um, just wanting you guys to know, just first and foremost, is that the city of Missoula did not host any kind of uh, uh, meetings. Uh, they hosted a couple of their typical uh, committee meetings here and there. Um, well, they didn't uh, uh, host their official meetings, though. I have no city council report for you guys in this particular episode. So let's dive right in as we're going to jump right into um, the Ukraine deal. So over 3.6 million people have fled Ukraine and over 10 million people have been displaced in their own country. This was coming out of the weekend of fighting and Russian military and crawling through the cities uh, and bombing indiscriminately. And so far, theater hosting 500 people was bombed, uh, but they had some underground tunnels that many folks were sheltered in. But so far, um, many uh, focuses have been shifted towards Mariupol. Mariupol, a city, has been hit hard with Russian uh, taking major military operations at the port city. The main goal, as it seems, like the Russians' military wants to take the city so they can have a, strate a strategic uh, advantage on the uh, seaside of Mariupol port city. Uh, when they annexed Crimea back in 2014, it was a big chunk of land that they took uh, uh, along the sea, and now they're basically cutting off uh, Ukraine from the sea by taking Mariupol. Um, there is some speculation in what media has been saying about uh, a stalemate. So, so far, the whole idea of a stalemate is that, it, like the trench warfare in World War I, it's a little bit one way, a little bit the other way, but the killing continues. So I just wanted to make that uh, very clear that stalemates have that tendency to kind of uh, convey like, oh, no, nothing's happening. No, there's a lot still happening. The scariest part is that this isn't the full might of the Russian military, mind you. Uh, remember, they invaded a country thinking they'd be welcomed. Uh, so dealing with that has been an issue. Uh, the, f uh, the last week or so, five Russian generals have been killed, uh, have shown uh, how unprepared this military operation has been thus far. Uh, but even scary might be the thought that maybe Putin set them up to fail these five generals because maybe they uh, have a lot of power. I don't know. The, the, the way that Russians think, the way that they do is like every move uh, can be very calculated in everything that, that can be that this that every failure can be turned into an opportunity for them to continue forward. So there's just a lot of speculation right there. And it's it's interesting that the media has been going like full cancel culture with uh, Putin with his calling him, you know, mentally incompetent and aptitude. He's too old. He's dementia, all that kind of stuff. Just, you know, pays people to attend his public display. Hey, listen, uh, the worst thing you can do is uh, underestimate someone because it can turn around and bite you in the ass. And I'm sorry about the language, but I've been seeing uh, so many U.S. related news po uh, posturing to the idea that the war is the only option. But in fact, the world is more united for peace more than anything. And of course, China is on the bench, and, I've, and they've been kind of playing kind of both sides. They still want to stay in business with everyone because they're a big economic powerhouse, and they've been exporting to many of these countries, including uh, Russia as well, and also getting a lot of their military equipment and oil. A lot of people depend on Russia for their natural gas and a lot of different things. And since they're not part of NATO, they don't feel the whole obligation to be like, hey, no, nah, we're not going to deal with that right now. Um, so they're going to kind of just ignore the conflict and and so far, the Chinese news media has also been calling this an invasion, not necessarily a, a war in Ukraine, just a special operation. So that's the word that they have been using over there. And um, one of the things is, uh, you know, in some of these countries, you know, they said that they're going to make uh, humanitarian corridors. But unfortunately, what I'm noticing is that the uh, humanitarian corridors for a lot of these countries go right back into Russia. And so they want to, uh, the Ukrainians who want to get out, they want to move as far away from Russia as they can, but the corridors have been towards Russia. So there's a lot of uh, speculation and a lot of people not. Uh, so in a lot of ways, there's a lot of people who are being technically held hostage by the Russians as well. So um, let's see. And like looking at it even right now, like, you know, you have the you have uh, different countries coming in and um, investing millions and billions of dollars just to keep uh, the conflict in Ukraine. And so that kind of shows exactly how the world is like, we're interested in peace, but we're not an interested in getting our hands dirty, but we're going to give them the, the means to protect themselves in our, but in a way it's more just like we're paying Ukraine to fight the Russians for us. So um, I don't know, that's kind of, it's kind of crazy going on here, but let's just move on. And uh, one of the things that are happening in America, uh, if you uh, have been paying attention, is the uh, U.S. is looking to uh, appoint a new Supreme Court justice. Uh, Judge uh, Ketanja Brown Jackson, is uh, otherwise known as KBJ, is looking to get 
the bump after being asked by the committee that will appoint her. She's uh, similar to Justice Sonia Sotomayor with experience as both a trial and a, a appeal judge. Uh, Dems like her and GOP constituents grilled her because that's just the way it is because the current powers that be uh, appoint a judge and the opposite powers uh, that not be have a tendency to be like, hey, this person's terrible. Let's throw them under the bus. Let's do whatever we can. And uh, one of the things that they do, uh, especially uh, one of the things they look into is try to pick apart every little detail. And some of the things they look forward to is mostly being accused of being pro-criminal because she was a criminal defense attorney. So she defends criminals and, and, and they really get the federal bump that she got in 2021. Uh, she is 51 and is a Harvard graduate and has many years of experience uh, throughout the week. Critical race theory has been a cornerstone in GOP reps as they've been asking Jackson, uh, Jackson if babies are born racist. So I'm only bringing that up because both sides are pandering towards racial issues because this judge candidate happens to be black. This would uh, be uh, when she politically answered as slowly dies inside. So one of the things that any anyways, Ted Cruz out of Texas asked the racist baby question. Uh, I don't want to talk about the controversies being brought out uh, of the blue and focus on the efforts she made in the past and how this woman can forge the future of the Supreme Court. However, the Roe versus Wade debate will not have anything to do with uh, KBJ as she is uh, potentially confirmed later on. But who knows? Uh, Justice Stephen Brenner, uh, the seat that she, the person who would be appointed would take this, uh, the seat. He was planning to retire. Uh, the, the story basically leaked and he was basically like, yeah, I guess I'm retiring, but I wanted to go off on my own terms, but I guess this is the way it is. So um, stepping down, this confirmation will basically test uh, KBG as folks are beginning to call her. Uh, we'll have to deal with uh, playing nice while being scrutinized at every angle. Uh, sounds like any woman addressing Congress in a leadership capacity. So anyways, justice and other news, another justice, Justice Clarence Thomas, went to the hospital this week. And AP has stated, but will plan to come back sooner. The pandemic al has allowed for a lot of the Supreme Court justices to do remote work um, and for, for, for many officials and open the door to be able to work from anywhere respectfully. Of course, you know, they are very traditional in the Supreme Court, so they have a tendency to want to meet in person. And um, you know, and uh, just a little side note as well, like the Supreme Court never actually televises or allows camera inside the chambers as they argue and look over cases, but they do release copies of their audio recording and the sound bites and oral arguments of their case later down the line. Um, and that's kind of what's happening in and around the world. Let's talk about what's happening in Missoula. This, this past Wednesday, uh, the, Missoula, the mayor of Missoula, John Engen, spoke to a crowd at the library here in the Missoula Public Library on Wednesday and answered some questions on housing and this particular uh, um, uh, question on rent control. So this is what he had to say. up the marketplace in other ways, right? So I don't know if, it, if it, there's one single answer for any of this. One of the things we do try to do is, is look at um, is look at what other communities are doing, steal the good ideas where we can and deploy them. Um, also listen to good ideas. You know, one of the one of the I think one of the, the most effective things that we've been able to do is build that relationship with the folks who are actually the uh, the folks who are building stuff. I mean, they, they understand this stuff on the ground all day. I talked to a, <coughs> I talked to a developer today um, operating out of uh, Fargo, North Dakota, and they just, got, they just got bids on a 200 unit project that they're, they're doing in uh, Eastern North Dakota. Um, and the, the, the per unit Pricing. They had a model. It was based on the last project they did. Um, the per unit pricing was forty-two thousand uh, dollars higher than it was for a similar project that they just completed last year. So that's forty-two thousand bucks a unit, right? All right. Um, so that was uh, Johnning and kind of reflecting on the. Oh, 
Yeah, so let me just uh, make sure that I'm up. Okay, so one of the big things that uh, they wanted to harp on is that, you know, construction costs are going up, developers are not necessarily as incentivized, and also um, even in Missoula, developers are so backed up with so many projects moving forward that, you know, we just don't know what's going to happen in the future. And many of the questions that they were talking about is like, there's a lot of signs that there might be another recession coming or we're already in a recession. There's just a lot of things um, happening in, in the world and, and are affecting Missoula as well. But this is something that's been kind of going on in Missoula. And rent control is just an excuse to keep low-income folks in their degraded places as their landlord um, feels less and less concerned to uh, field some of their ten tenants' uh, uh, complaints. Plumbing, heating, and more. Um, Missoula is uh, high prices for rent in, in any case. And, you know, one example is my friend. Um, he was paying um, uh, $500 a month for a studio apartment, which sounds nice, but it was uh, originally supposed to be $700, but they knocked down about $200 uh, off the price just because his sink wouldn't work and he didn't have much uh, in terms of plumbing. And then after a couple months, they decided to be like, hey, you're going to have to pay the full $700. It's like, hey, aren't you going to fix my sink? That's, no, you're going to have to pay the $700 and we'll fix it. And like, that's not how it works. So that's just kind of the thing that in Missoula, especially, like, you know, the landlords definitely have the edge in the city of Missoula with just the high demand of people wanting to live here. So Engen has been tired and suffering from abdominal pain for the last several months. And in an MRI confirmed early this month that uh, followed by a biopsy that he has a uh, carcinoma on his pancreas and cancerous tumor on his liver. And of course, the story says that it's pancreatic cancer. In a way, this is kind of adjacent to the pancreas, so there is some levels to really nip this in the bud. So there's a lot of um, hope in terms of getting this, so uh, Mayor John Engen will be doing treatment and doing more talks over the course of the last Wednesday of the month, otherwise, or the fourth Wednesday of the month, and the next one will be happening on April 27th, which, which will be talking about um, uh, homelessness. So he wants to tackle homelessness. This last talk was about house uh, being uh, like housing in Missoula, and so they're looking. Uh, so if you're interested, you can find those talks on MCAT.org or the YouTube or, or on YouTube at MCAT TV. So, other than that, MCAT has been filming around our space and the library with a bunch of those wacky kids of our spring flicks uh, uh, during our spring break camp, otherwise known as spring. Flicks. So up next we have previews of films to come for uh, some of the parents tonight and we'll be premiering it on our YouTube channel later this afternoon. So you guys get a sneak peek on what to expect. Raise yourselves. to help you. 
I don't need no help. Okay, I need a little bit of help. Yeah, I think you do. Ugh. I don't need your help. I think you do. You could just stand. I don't stand for standing. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. It's time to talk about some movies, and we're going to kick things off, taking those off, bring up my audio just a little bit, not too much. All right, kicking things off. We're kicking things off, and I'm stalling as I bring this baby up. It is time for the launch of the game I've been waiting for. Yes, I am prejudging this. Uh, based on absolutely nothing, but I'm saying that this is the game of the word baby, just uh, Kirby. Finally, all the waiting has come to an end, and I will have to wait another 10 hours to play this game now. Enjoy this whack experience of a Mario 3D World mechanic uh, from 10 years ago applied to this brand new uh, state-of-the-art game, uh, plus this whole uh, um, sucking in things to get their powers and have mouthful mode that basically means that you are cappy from Mario Odyssey, which is a ripoff of what comes from the same company. So can you really rip off the same company? Anyways, up next we got a movie that's coming out. Everywhere, everything, no, everything, everywhere, all at once except for Missoula, Montana. Uh, like the never ending story, which ends by the way, comes everything, everywhere, all at once in a story about a single mom and her kids get thrust into the multiverse all at once. Need more context? Basically, uh, this movie kind of shows you uh, that what you need to know from what I said. Um, watch a family movie that has sci-fi elements and plenty of action from others using versions of yourself to fight back. So in a way, you know, you have a sign twirler. She uses that to fight a riot squad. There's just a lot of different things going on in this movie. And I think uh, the one thing they probably won't have is a plot just because, you know, it's like, oh, it's a multiverse. It's all show, but no substance. Welcome to, the, uh, welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> Up next, we have The Lost City or Magic Mike was a book follows a romantic novelist on her adventure with her cover model to find a lost city of treasure. Hey, listen, this would have been fun if it was made like in the 90s when Fabio was an actual thing. But anyways, um, you know, the whole idea is that somebody gets obsessed with their book, like Misery, but in this case, it's a philanthropist, rich guy who's just like, oh, I'm looking for the lost city where there's probably gonna be lost treasure because I'm a rich guy. And so you have Harry Potter who plays the rich guy and Sandra Bullock is also in this movie, as you probably kind of read in this little thing up there. Um, but he uses what she knows in her books to help find the lost city. Other things happen, other things, blah, blah, blah. And also the cover model is there to be a himbo, as they call like the dumb, muscle-bound, you know, good-looking guy. Basically, it's uh, derogatory towards for a very attractive man, Channing Tatum. <coughs> um, and they're making a movie about this. I'm assuming they find the lost city and something happens and everyone, and the bad guy gets what is coming to him or whatever. He gets just far enough to fail. That's what you can expect. It's, it's, it's basically a treasure hunting movie where the bad guy never really wins and the good guys think that they don't get away with anything but then they get away with just like, I had a whole knapsack of gold. Cool, end of movie. There you go, I just saved you 20 bucks. And then time for a speed round. The Duke 
sorry boys, it's not John Wayne, but get the polar opposite of cowboys with British people who get thrown into adventure based on a true story. So the Duke is basically a painting, and this guy has the painting, he's a cab driver, and things happen. All right, then we have Mothering Sunday. More British people gather than when pubs reopened in London after the pandemic in these reviews. Enjoy post-World War I made in her adventures in uh, indentured servitude and finding romance with people. All right, so those are your movies that are coming out this weekend and more. I have a fun art interlude for you guys, and here it is. Last song was uh, featuring Steve Gukert, former Missoula Art Museum curator. He allowed me to use his song. Um, it is a cover of This Little Light of Mine. 
just so you guys know. All right, so let's so that's pretty much all the videos I have to show for you guys. There's really not much that I got to say, but I'm going to kind of go over a couple things that are happening here within the library and more um, things. You know, you have Tiny Tales and Story Time is a great opportunity for kids to learn some reading. Um, it is the middle of spring break. Honestly, the library is the best place to uh, bring a lot of kids, and they have been bringing some kids here to the library, not only for our Spring Flix Camp, but also other activities here at the library. Spectrum Science Discovery Center uh, here on the second floor. The second floor is basically all the kids' floor here at the Missoula Public Library. It is a great opportunity for kids to learn, read, and engage with each other. 10.30 a.m. every Friday and Saturday, Tiny Tales Story Time. Great way for kids to get involved with books and reading. Um, also, they have yarns and watercolor, knit, knit craft, art, arts and crafts, all happening at noon on the fourth floor of the Missoula Public Library. Um, they also have um, other things. Uh, MCAT is having our Photoshop and Premiere lessons this afternoon. Uh, the spots are still available. If you are interested in signing up, you can call us at 542-6228. All right, so that's kind of like a brief overview of, of a lot of things happening at the library. I might repeat a couple things at the library as well, but I'm going to jump right into some other things. Lifelong Learning Center, inter introduction to, to, uh, to uh, soldering, uh, soldering, sorry, soldering, Basic soldering, uh, learn about uh, all sorts, wow, there's a lot of different, uh, there's sweat sol soldering, butt soldering, and pick soldering with the cover tips and common problems. Learn the skills to open up a new world of opportunities of your jewelry making. So the whole idea is that you're making jewelry, earrings, soldering, that kind of thing. It's a great way for people to get their hands on. The cost fee is $97, but like I said, Lifelong Learning Center is a great uh, educational opportunity for adults looking to jump on, get certified in different fields as they go move forward onto the next step. It is a great kind of like, I just want to learn just one thing. I don't want to take like a whole course or anything with a bunch of other classes. One class at a time is good enough for me, and that's what the Lifelong Learning Center is all about, in my opinion. All right, Recovery Through Writing, the Phoenix Missoula. So this is a organization in Missoula that has uh, helping people keeping, uh, keeping them sober by creating expressions through recovery through writing. They used to have it at the shack, and now they're doing it at the Break Expresso Fridays at 11 a.m. It's International Waffle Day, so if you're interested in bringing kids down to the library, why not just uh, head on over to the Families First Learning Lab, International Waffle Day, make a waffle craft with cupcake liners, for the person in your life who loves breakfast. And I'm gonna do it for Neil, because I love that boy. Anyway, <laughs> so terrible. Uh, uh, he's not gonna see this. But anyways, um, MCT, I just wanted to say that they also been doing a spring break camp this week as well, and they're gonna be doing a representation of Stilt Skin, their uh, children's theater adaptation of it. They're gonna have a five o'clock showing and a 7 p.m. showing, but just so you guys know, they usually do like a switcheroo between casts, so whoever's starring in the 5 o'clock one will not be starring in the 7 o'clock one. They've done this in the past, and this is a one-time only event for you to enjoy. So this is a Missoula Children's Theater, one of the biggest uh, theater, traveling theater companies across international. They, they have, they have uh, MCT in China. A lot of great opportunities for this stuff as well. MCT do, is doing it tonight. For history buffs, Missoula Public Library starting at 7 p.m. So the, the library is usually closed after six, so they'll have entryways through the basement and they'll be leading you up to the fourth floor in the Cooper Room from seven to 9 p.m. last Friday of each month. Join guest speaker from a lively and entertainment presentation of historic interest. This month's presentation is Looking Like the Enemy, Alien Detention Center era at Fort Missoula, presented by Emma Shea. Uh, during World War II, Fort Missoula was hosting an internment camp um, and processing many different folks to be sent to internment camps as well. One of the more internment camps that they are having here is uh, Missoula housed a lot of Italian internments during World War II. Um, so that was, that was a lot of things happening as well, but this is between 1941 and 1944. At Fort Missoula had 1,200 non-military Italian men, 1,000 Japanese resident aliens, uh, 23 German resident aliens, and 123 Japanese, Latin, and South Americans. In this program, they will explore the experience of these men as they were held in Fort Missoula, having their loyalty questioned followed by following the bombing of Pearl Harbor. At uh, Ogisi, the woman is hosting a hip-hop group. 
uh, Dueling Pianos at Stephen Hoop uh, Speakeasy, DJ Matt at Monk's Bar in Missoula, Mudslide Charlie, um, and that's sort of the things that are happening on your Friday night if you're interested in going out and about. It is the last Friday of the month, so next week we'll have a your first Friday art guide and more. So let's jump right into Saturday. As always, Saturday MCAT hosts our orientation every Saturday at 10 a.m., but also we do it at Mondays at 5.30 p.m. These are drop-ins, no RSV, uh, RSVP required. It is a great way to experience, and, it, it, and MCAT is a great resource for people who want to make movies, television shows, media, vlogs, just a, a, an opportunity to provide the technical support that people need to get their own program launched on the channel as well. So I just wanted to mention that. Also, we have our um, Saturday drop-ins that we're going to be doing. I don't know why, but uh, I, I, I would have loved to actually take a, taken a break because this whole week we've had uh, spring flicks. But this Saturday, we're also having an additional Saturday uh, animation for kids from 1 to 3 for kids who like stop animation. All right, so other things that are happening on Saturday, as always, there's the winter market from 9 a.m. to about 1 p.m. They have it at the Southgate Mall and also at Orchard Homes off of 3rd Street, and this will be going well until the end of April. And May, we'll start kicking off more of the farmer's market. You'll see a lot of like things happening in downtown Missoula as we ease into the summer. A lot of construction is going to be wrapping up. Hopefully, the Higgins Bridge will be wrapped up by May, June, around that time. So we're looking forward to that. Um, Purple Day, Family's First Learning Lab, from 12 to 3, make a purple butterfly clothespin craft learn about the color purple, and it is a great way for people, for kids to stop on by and make some arts and crafts. Library is a good facilitator of that. Prune the Moon, Moon Randolph Homestead, as they're moving into the summer, they're going to be doing some more tours every Saturday, but this is their annual Prune the Moon workshop, where they look at the art of restoring old apple trees in the Moon Randolph Homestead, um, some of these apple trees are well over 130 years old, and Missoula's Missoul, um, Moon Randolph Homestead was basically bought by the city of Missoula and has been used for educational purposes. People can actually um, be caretakers of uh, the Moon Randolph Homestead. They usually have about a two to four year deal, and you have to go through an application process. But the whole idea is that you're a caretaker, and as a caretaker, you basically get free rent to stay on this property, but there's a lot of responsibility to cover this homestead, um, which includes you know showing people around, doing tours, and hence the prune of the moon. So you can actually find out more information about uh, the Moon Randolph Homestead and how you can get involved through the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, and, and as you're going into the afternoon on Saturday, uh, the library has a uh, Dungeons & Dragons Guild for Teenagers. They usually have an adult one on Friday nights at around 6 o'clock, but this one's in the afternoon on Saturdays at 3 p.m. They usually do it online, but they might do it here at the library at 3 p.m., but you can look up the link on MissoulaEvents.net or the MissoulaPublicLibrary.org. All right. Um, Hellgate Roller Girls is doing an open skate at the Furnace, which is their uh, location right across from Black Rose and Coffee Company, which is off of Spruce. Just as you get to the uh, to train tracks, that area, they're doing a free skate, and this is a great way to recruit some young girls to do some uh, roller derby as well. Miss A and the Caravan Band, Imagination Broom Company, uh, they're hosting this soul-filled American pop folk band led by singer-songwriter Elena Dennis Damron. Damron, sorry, and an ever-changing group made uh, up of uh, her amazingly musical friends. DraftWorks is also having a, uh, a terrace act, uh, is playing at the DraftWorks Brewing Company. Highway to Helena is going to be uh, featured at the Zach tonight, uh, uh, Saturday night. March 4th at the Wellman is going to have some funk music. Uh, Paint and Sip, Buffalo on Black, painting with a twist at 7 p.m. on Saturday night. And then you got some karaoke at the West Side Lanes while you go bowling and all that stuff. But I also wanted to mention that on Sunday, there's going to do a, for those of you interested in doing some cycling, starting at 9 a.m. at Big Side Brewing Company, just out by the airport. It is a uh, opportunity for people to uh, bike and race. So that's what's going to be happening there. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's really not much going on with that. I wanted to wrap up my show early because we have um, some kids coming in for the last day of our spring flicks, uh, our spring break camp, and I wanted to get some things ready and prepared, so I'm going to have to cut this uh, episode short for you guys. So, uh, lucky you. So, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Take care, guys.